Thank you very much. And uh, I want to thank our um, hosts for giving us the opportunity to share with my colleagues, with our future colleagues, uh, the result of our um, research. Yesterday, I wanted to speak about uh, constructive journalism as a solution to the fake news. Uh, all of us know that in the modern world, our negative news in traditional media um, almost leaves no place for positive news. People distance themselves from uh, news broadcast, but not for information, because people need information based on their own needs. Uh, at each level of Maslow pyramid of needs, a person needs information. That's why modern people to defend against negativism look for information on social networks and online media, where there is a very high risk of fake news. Why? The answer is simple. As PD oriented journalists spend less time verifying information. Often, new media journalists forget the main thing that differentiates the information from social media, which is the accuracy of facts, which increases the credibility of information. And in the modern world, where people have easy access to any information, they need reliable, accurate, and correct information. Constructive news meets uh, this demand of modern men. Our presentation will discuss in detail the principles of constructive news and the stage that the journalist who wants to make constructive news uh, should go through. Why do we think that a constructive news is the solution to fake news? Because at the very first stage when a journalist identifies a problem, he should describe the problem in detail, investigate the causes of the problem in a nuanced way, and at the last stage, think about what could be the way to solve the problem. At this stage, many questions should be asked. For example, how can uh, solve the problem, or who can solve the problem? Uh, how competent is this person or institution in finding a, a way to solve the problem? How much right path does it offer? Has anyone else had a similar problem? How did he solve? And most importantly, a journalist should be self-critical at every stage of journalistic activity. We all know that dramatic stories make news. So I want to discuss a case that would make it to any type of broadcast in any country. The incident happened in Baghdadi, which is an administrative center of Baghdadi municipality in western Georgia on February 3rd. Four children and two women died in the fire. And the story became known to the media same night around uh, 23 uh, p.m. and was uh, one of the leading topics of the day for all media on February, February 3rd. At first, all media reported the five did uh, to the audience as the sixth body was later found by um, rescuers. Some of the media have corrected the materials in accordance with, with the standard of uh, correction, but inaccurate information is still being uh, sought on the report page. Uh, TV first started covering the strategy uh, shortly after the incident, initially at some um, uh, uh, 10 uh, past 23. A video of the fire was published on the channel's Facebook page. Later, around uh, 3 a.m., a video from the archive of TV first with the title Tra Tragedy was published on the channel's Facebook page. The video showed uh, footage of the life of a socially vulnerable family, which was broadcast on November 21st in the reaction program. In the public, um, in the published video fragment, a woman living uh, in uh, poverty talked about the suspension of social assistance. The uh, misleading content of the video broadcast by the broadcaster was attached 
Mother and four children died as a result of the fire. The family, which lived in extreme poverty, was also um, uh, deprived of uh, social assistance a few months ago. The broadcaster, the, uh, broadcaster did not provide its audience with the information that the family's social assistance was temporarily uh, suspended for a certain reason, uh, according to the Ministry of Health, due uh, to the lack of a subscriber number for um, uh, utility payments. He did not explain that in December uh, the assistance was resumed to the family and uh, the trail amount was paid in uh, one lump sum. This video of the first became an inspiration for other online media, which also missed the audience. Based on TV first, the following 10 media, uh, which, uh, uh, yeah, 10 media um, uh, spread the inaccurate information about the um, uh, withdrawal of social assistance for the family who died as a result of the fire. So it was, uh, for example, this video, Fortuna, etc. On the mentioned pages, inaccurate information about the removal of social uh, assistance is still being sought without additional explanations and has not been corrected in time. The mentioned video on the Facebook page of TV First has more than 383,000 views and 5,400 shares. Also during the day, TV First did not mention once that the broadcaster initially, initially uh, disseminated inaccurate information. Why was such coverage problematic? We all know, uh, uh, and uh, I uh, think we are uh, all agree, uh, that the uh, tragedy has happened in uh, Bangladesh, who have been in the focus of the media, and it is also clear that the media should have asked all the questions and raised the issue of the responsibility of all relevant authorities. However, disseminating the materials at this time and in this form without indicating that it was from the airship and that the family had recovered after the removal of social assistance was manipulative and messed the audience. Such coverage created an indirect indication that the fire was caused by distress, which has not been established at this moment. How would a journalist work on constructive news? After the initial results of the fire were covered in the news, the journalists will start researching the results of the fire, asking the following questions. How many victims, what is their condition, have all affected persons been identified, or are investigation being carried out by the relevant authorities? Trust me, there is zero chance of making a mistake here. Even if the journalist found an inaccuracy in the first coverage, he would definitely make the, all the appropriate changes in the next coverage. He will search for information about the victims. Who are they? Where do they live? What do they do? Why did they find themselves in the scent of the fire? Finding answers to these questions will prevent inaccurate information from being reported. As uh, if social assistance uh, has been cut off from the state at the given moment. Uh, then uh, journalists will uh, begin to investigate you know, the causes of the fire. He asks the questions, what caused the fire? What do the um, eyewitnesses of the fire and the relevant authorities suspect? Here too, he would have been safe from the misunderstanding we saw when the journalist covered this tragedy as if the fire was connected to hardship. Finally, a constructive newsmaker journalist asked a question. How could the fire be prevented? How should the victims behave so that the fire did not lead to causalities? 
these answers will pay, make the audience think and teach him how to behave in a similar situation. In conclusion, we should note that the example study based on uh, the comparative analysis uh, within our research confirmed the high degree of reliability of constructive news. We studied 10 different online media, mainly the web page of television, because in Georgia, only the public broadcaster covered the news in a constructive way. We selected topics by random sampling method. We analyzed a total of 50 news, uh, 35 traditional news, and 15 constructive news. It was revealed that 5% of inaccurate information is provided to us by traditional reporting, while we did not count inaccurate information in constructive news, because constructive uh, news maker journalist is self-critical, asks many questions, and tries to view the world with both eyes. Thank you very much for your attention.